Haven, Ben Lyons, ready to roar. He's here to talk about changing landscape of Hollywood sports and more. Put down your phones. The issue is starts right now. Trying to rock the boat. Trying to get registered to vote, man. It's important. NBA star Kevin Durant and his teammates with the Golden State Warriors doing their part for democracy in a Rock the Vote ad. Our next guest helped to be a part of, to make all that happen. Ben Lyons, well known in the world of entertainment, politics, and sports. He hosts the Mostly Football Show on Yahoo Sports. He also hosts the Lions Den podcast on Podcast One. He's a frequent host on ESPN Los Angeles. There he is right there, the Lion's Den <laughs> podcast. Um, ben Lyons, thank welcome to the Thank you so much for having issuous. me, and thank you for providing this wonderful platform for uh, the residents of the great state of California. And it's just really been amazing to watch you amplify such uh, wonderful stories that affect and impact our state, and it's really cool to be a part of it. So we thanks should, for having me. We should stop there, because it's never going to get any better than that for me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's talk about uh, Rock the Vote, though, and, and works that you're doing with, with the Warriors. Um, and more generally, the uh, concept of athletes and activism. I remember the morning after the 2016 presidential election, and I was sitting there b confused and bewildered, and uh, like many Americans, and kind of wondering what I could do and what my part in the conversation moving our country forward would be. And as a huge NBA fan, I know how the league markets the all-star game to us as fans. Vote for LeBron. Vote for Chris Paul. Vote for Kevin Durant. As a Knicks fan, there's no one to vote for. Um, but <laughs> I would like now for the NBA and for basketball culture to get Get behind voting for the game of life and to their credit to you know Steve Kerr and the Golden State Warriors being the leaders of the league they jumped right on board Elsa Collins is a dear friend of both of ours and she's married to Jaron Collins assistant coach for the Golden State Warriors along with uh, Carolyn DeWitt the president of Rock the Vote the three of us just went up there in September and registered not only the players and coaches but also employees for the Warriors and shot a video that played at Oracle and just really kind of engage the, the league and, and these players who are passionate about their communities in the process of voting. And, you know, they are the real life Avengers for so many young people. They are the real life superheroes, not only just for young people, for grown ups too. And so to see them go out there and, and stand behind a cause like this, which is essentially just doing the bare minimum, right? right. Voting. Um, I, I think it has a great impact, and, and it was really inspiring to be a part of and to see the impact it had on other people. You know, there was that controversial comment made by Laura Ingram, Shut Up and Dribble, which LeBron made a whole series about in response to. I got to work to. on that film. I was a story yeah. consultant on that. I'm very proud of it. So, yeah. I mean, what do you make of, of the fact, the way that people respond to athletes when they do speak out? That, that comment, history will show, it w was uh, so coded and, and was so inappropriate. And I applaud LeBron for the way he was able to take a moment like that and turn it into a, a, a teaching moment where you kind of laid out the history of activism in the NBA and players using their voice. And it's incredible that these young men and women athletes are able to travel the world and, and connect with so many different types of people. And there's so much more than just athletes. And the sooner that we as civilians can appreciate that and celebrate them for that, I think the more we have uh, to benefit from that. And so in the tradition of Muhammad Ali, in the tradition of Craig Hodges and Mahmoud Abdul-Aruf and so many uh, athletes who have spoken out against injustice, I love seeing LeBron and Melo and these guys carry that torch. So for our friends in the Bay Area, is Kevin Durant going to be with the Warriors next year? As a New York Knicks fan, I don't think so, guys. But hopefully <laughs> you're enjoying all your winning and your jewelry now. But something tells me you might be heading east. Dear God, please, please. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's, it's a really special thing to be around that team, honestly. Yeah. You know, as me, as just a basketball fan. But the energy around those guys, because they are so present in their communities, right? Steph yeah. is a leader and a father. KD is a leader. I mean, Draymond, they're out there doing really important work and not only on the basketball court but in the game of life and that's why I just tip my hat to them. Well you compared the Warriors to the Avengers uh, but the Avengers on screen are deba <laughs> debuting this weekend the Endgame film which could make a billion wow, dollars. That's amazing. That's your other area of expertise yeah. the film world. Why do you think that has become such a phenomenon? You know I remember being at Comic-Con with John Favreau in, I think, 2005. So this is before he directed the first Iron Man. And he went down there on, like, a recon mission to kind of learn about those most those passionate comic book fans who love these characters. And while the celebrities who play them now in the movies aren't outsiders, they're some of the most beautiful and talented and powerful people in the world, the characters on screen 
they're all kind of outsiders and misfits and the people that society has kind of passed over or forgotten. And I think that fundamentally is what draws people in to these underdog stories told on this heightened scale. And it takes you right back to your childhood. I mean, we all pretended we are at superpowers at one point or another. And anytime you can tap into that nostal nostalgia, it's a powerful currency. And I think that's why people respond to it. But sort of broader in terms of the, the Hollywood, where Hollywood is at right now, it's been hard to draw people to the movies because there's so much great stuff on TV and so much stuff streaming and a lot of the big stars are on TV and streaming now. Yeah. It, but y you have here the Avengers literally like like the characters, the movie stars coming together. You know, back in the day, movie movies were the only time you could see your favorite movie stars. Um, so when uh, when an actor was in a film, it was an event. Well, now we can see him on Instagram, we can see him in the tabloids and we can see him on talk shows. So it's no longer an event to see the movie. So there are very few movie stars who can kind of carry the release of a film on a global scale on their back. So what did they do? They all joined forces. They all came, they said, all right, well, one movie star can't open a movie, so I have about 100. And they put them all in this movie. And what I love about this is as a fan of film, well, yeah, this is commercial popcorn entertainment for the masses, and they do a wonderful job with these movies. The fact that these stars can earn a living now and have their exposure risen because they're in these films, they can go out there and make the artistic passion projects that they can do at Sundance or the little niche films that would never otherwise get an audience. Now they have a chance because they're part of the Avengers, and so I'm really excited about that. Meanwhile, the biggest show in all of TV is a show, Game of Thrones, that has no big names, or at least not, not when it started out. Yeah, Game of Thrones is kind of like my relationship with baseball. It's a lot of white guys with beards, and I don't know who they are. <laughs> It's like, oh, in walks this guy. It's a middle reliever from the Pirates. Some guy with a beard. You know, okay, so you're not, you're not on board, but a lot of other people I understand are. why people love the show. It transports them, obviously, to a world outside of their, uh, of their own. And, boy, what a phenomenon in, 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 in pop culture today. Yeah, well, one thing we do know that you do love is basketball. So we've got some music for you on that scene. Okay. And up next, we want some predictions from Ben, including about the NBA Finals. Oh, let's but do now, it. Let's a do little it. basketball Jones. <laughs> I love the DJ on this show. Shout out to the DJ. You guys that's, did a great that's job. A, that's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back. Like me, Mr. Ben Lyons here has a deep love of basketball, also film and politics. So here are three big questions. We're going right. to put you on the hot seat let's right do it. now. Okay? Let's do it. So who is going to win the NBA championship? The Golden State Warriors. This is one of the greatest displays of teamwork and the beauty of the basketball we've ever seen. I think it's going to be Warriors and Celtics. Uh, I think Kyrie leads them now that he's healthy uh, to, the, to the finals. Shout out to the Clippers though, for a good fight. Uh, who's <laughs> going to win the Oscar next year, even though it's early? Very early, but the uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood film from Quentin Tarantino getting a lot of buzz, obviously. I think you could see uh, Brad Pitt maybe win his first Oscar. He's getting a lot of early buzz. But here we are. We got tw ten months till the awards. Yeah. Give, me a, give me a little. That's beat how to good you are. Uh, yeah. And then who is going to win the Democratic nomination? Beto O'Rourke has my support. I, I really believe in what he stands for and his compassion, his humanity. I don't know if he has the momentum on a national stage. Potentially Biden and Beto could be a winning ticket. I think your panelists were right, though. It's definitely in the three Bs. Okay. Well, we like to play music on the show, as we mentioned. And your choice is a tribe called Quest. I left my wallet in El Segundo. Magic Why Johnson, you left your wallet in El Segundo and you were walking out on the Lakers, dude. You got to go and get it. Go, go and get it. Shout out to uh, Tribe Called Quest. Uh, we encourage Rest you to listen five. to a uh, special <laughs> podcast we just recorded with Ben, where we talk about his background, dig a lot deeper into these big issues. In fact, you can listen to all of our past episodes in podcast form, plus a lot of digital extras. Search for The Issue Is wherever you stream. Please subscribe as well. That's all for this week. I'm Alex Michelson. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. And we take it away. Try. Came to a toe, we paid and went through it. Had no destination, we was on a quest. I laid in the back so he can get rest. Drove down the road for two days and a half. The sun had